Okay, so this is attempt two to record this video, because the first time I attempted it, the camera cut off midway through. So, here we go. So, this is talking about sort of basic body armour you can get in the UK and what I'd recommend. So, we've got what we've class as covert body armour, body armour that can be worn under clothing. Over basic body armour, sort of is designed to be worn as a jacket, but, you know, you can wear those under clothes if you've got thick enough clothes. And sort of military style body armour. Now, this is a compact one, because it's a British ECBA vest, enhanced combat body armour which is essentially a Kevlar sort of body liner with a front and back ceramic panel that's level 4 rated. Um, in all these body armors you'll generally see like level 1, level 2, level 3 rated. In most armor systems, the higher the level, the more protective it is. So a level 2 will protect you from everything a level 1 will, but additional things. And then level 3, again, anything a level 2 and 1 do is plus level 3 threats. So most anti-stab and sort of knife-resistant vests in the UK are classed in both spike and stab ratings um so the idea is that a spike is something like a hypodermic needle or an ice pick a stab is just basically a standard knife or a blade um stab resistance is easier for a vest to stop because the blade is generally spread over a wider area making it easier for the kevlar to stop it whereas spike is you know harder because it's a much thinner point it's the same reason needles puncture much more easily so, in general, the higher the ratings, the better, but you'll sometimes struggle to find spike ratings without upgrade panels. So, covert vest, obviously you wear it under your jacket, overt vest, you wear it over. Not always, but often coverts have a lower armour rating, mostly because of the fact they're designed to be as discreet as possible being worn under clothing. Whereas the more overt vests often, you know, are more protective, but they're a lot more bulky, so you'll find it harder. Obviously, check the ratings on each vest. So what you want to look for is a combined ballistic and knife protection rating. So ballistic will be like normally the N, I think it's called the US NIJ level. And what you want is 2 or 3A. 3A is higher than 2, but for example, level 3 would be higher than 3A, which gets a bit confusing. But 3A is basically most handgun rounds. In a standard vest like that, 3A is the highest level you're going to get, unless you go to a vest like this that has ceramic or basically thermoplastic or steel plates in it. Because for Kevlar to get to level 3 rating, it has to be really thick, whereas standard armour doesn't. So, older Kevlar vests used to have for their sort of stab and spike resistance a kind of chainmail style armour in the front. Then they updated it to a different kind of weave of either nylon or Kevlar in the front. Uh, which is better, but obviously depending on the age of the vest, depends on what you'll get. The best place I found at the moment, other than eBay, to get old sort of body armour vests on is Prepper's Shop, because they seem to have lots on there for £50 or less for the carrier, as in the vest sort of bit itself, plus the panels that go inside it, as in the actual armour. Um, those two police style ones I really like, because again, you can wear that type under your clothes if it's in the winter and it's not that obvious. That type under any sort of coat isn't going to show up really at all. Um, the ECBA is probably my favourite armour vest full stop, although something to point out with the ECBA, the armour in it isn't knife resistant. How well it would stop a knife, I don't know, but it's not rated for it. The reason being it's designed to be anti-shrapnel and sort of handgun rounds for most of this vest, and then that plate is what's designed to stop rifle rounds. So um, basically, yeah, work out what level of protection you need, because obviously you can get much bulkier vests and heavier vests than that one, but bear in mind... Although they're better at protecting you, they also make you slower. You're less likely to want to wear the vest because it's heavier, more likely to make your muscles ache and everything. If you've had back problems, you know, you might not like heavier vests for that reason. Most of these vests, however, like one kilo, if that. That's a bit more than one kilo, but when you're wearing it because the weight's spread across, you don't feel it very much. Some of the police vests like that one are probably quite easily under one kilo. And because you're getting that over your shoulders, front and back, it feels pretty spread out. So basically, yep. Pretty straightforward, these vests, but I know I've talked about them before, but yeah, if you're interested, look at Prepper Shop or eBay for ex-police vests in the UK. Make sure you get one that's both stab-resistant and ballistically resi uh, resistant for, you know, most common threats. Spike resistance is always a plus, but you won't always find panels like that. You can generally always upgrade these vests with new panels or fillers afterwards, because most are pretty standard sizes, as in it's just kind of... um. You know, that torso-shaped piece of Kevlar filler that most of them have in there. Um, so there you go. So there's just some vests to consider. But for anybody that's asking, yes, you can get them on Prepper's shop. Obviously, ceramic panels like this, for example, can make a vest like this level 4 rated on the panel. And that means that the panel and the armour behind it will basically stop 
um, sort of most rifle rounds as well, including sort of AK rounds, you know, 762 by 51 millimeter NATO rounds, things like that, 556 NATO. Um, so yeah, depends on what you want the vest for. Regular sort of standard Kevlar filler vests will not stop rifle rounds on their own. They always need upgrade plan uh, panels or plates for that. But, um, you know, look at what you need in a vest for your own personal use if you're wearing it for private security or whatever, or home protection. Figure out what you think you'd need and then get something in that budget sort of range. Because obviously there's no point having a gigantic vest you're never going to want to wear, just as there's no point having a vest that doesn't cover any of the threats you think you might face. Because if you've only got a stab-resistant vest and you're expecting to be shot at with by at least a handgun, that vest's not going to do you any good.